All right, we're going to run through the formula sheet for Supply Chain 303 with Darcy. This is a formula sheet she gives. Okay, now I'm not particularly fond of her formula sheets because they're too chaotic, too random, they're not organized well. And up here she talks about what a hypothesis test is, statistical hypothesis, a statement about theory of value of the population. This is HA she's talking about right there, not HO, not the null, this is alternative. The purpose of a hypothesis test, to aid the manager or researcher and reach a decision about a population. Okay, the null hypothesis, this is a statement about the parameter of population. This is generally written by the status quo, which we accept to be true, and pending further information. And the alternative of research, this is HA, a statement of which contradicts the null. In fact, HO and HA are supposed to be direct opposites, and that's what she's saying right here, contradicts the null. We accept the truth or alternative hypothesis the null only when sufficient evidence is obtained. She's not doing a good job of listening with HO and HA are here. They are opposites. There's three different types, which she does give way down here. Here's the three different types of HO and HA. It's probably going to be way more useful than what she is saying way up here. Okay? Basically, up here, she could have summarized this with a couple of little short sayings like, what do we want true? What can we prove true? What do we assume true? We assume HO is true. We want HA to be true. We can prove HA is true. There, I could have said that a lot quicker. The errors, the type 1 errors and type 2 errors. I, I really don't like this table. It's a lot better just to write out what a type 1 error is. And this is done poorly here. A type 1 error claim... HA is true, when HO is true. That's much better in the table, and it's much better in what's here. Type 1 error, assume HO is true. Alphas are probably rejecting HO. Alphas are probably claiming HA is true when HO is true. For a type 2, you just flip it. Claim HO true. When HA is true. So for type 2 error, you just flip the type 1. Okay. Now she's telling you if you decrease alpha, beta increases, vice versa. Th this, that will be useful on the exam review. Okay. Now moving on to this right here, she's going to go through the three different types of hypothesis tests now. You have categorical, numerical, and less than 30 numerical and greater than 30. And she's not going to do a good job of explaining this. This is numerical and greater than 30. Okay, it doesn't have to say normal because according to Darcy, if it's bigger than 30, it's normal. Okay, down here, this has to say normal. It's numerical. And N is less than 30. And she should state all this, but I bet she doesn't. Okay, uh, only t-table, only if n is less than 30, and then we can use the if n is greater than 30, we use these in approximation. Nowhere does she say in here that it has the same normal. And what's really annoying is why is this between the two? These two are inter kind of, you use one or the other, and why is all this in between? I don't get it. Here she's saying um, for a two-sided hypothesis test in a confidence interval, mu are equivalent. So when should you use a confidence interval? If we have no particular idea of the value of mu, we use a confidence interval. If we have to make a comparison, then we use a hypothesis test. Basically, if you're trying to find a number, it's a confidence interval. If you have the number, it's a hypothesis test. All of this should be way up here. It should not be here. It doesn't make sense that it's there. It's out of order. Now, if we go to the second page, she's now got the categorical one. Keep in mind, n has to be over 30. Okay. So this is just the categorical test. She doesn't say that anywhere, just n is over 30. P-value, she says, the definition of p-value right here, p-value is probably assuming HO is true, the test statistic more extreme. Okay, it's basically saying the p-value so probably we have this data if we assume HO is true. A small p-value means we observed a value in the tail of the distribution. The smaller p-value, the more evidence we have to reject HO. So small p-value, reject HL. Okay. P 
P-values are useful in reject HO. I have no one does this table, just her. Okay, the general rule, P less than alpha reject. She could have just said that instead of all this stuff that you probably won't really deal with. Okay, p-values computed to the tail areas. Okay, in other words, you need to draw a picture of your HA over here. And once you have your picture of HA, you calculate your p-value. P-value is called observed. You should need to know this. And alpha is the... Um, given or stated and now, now she's telling us the p-value rule here now she's getting in the two sample the two sample numerical and this is the categorical okay and degrees of freedom n1 plus n2 minus 2 you have to both have both ends greater than 30 right here Okay, now if it already says normal, then you have to have this. So if it states normal over 5, if it doesn't state normal in over 30. And the following hypothesis tests in CI should be used and observed number yes or no, these samples at least 5. That's new. She in the past have been saying n greater than 30, just like up here, but nope. Now she's saying n times p is greater than or equal to 5. n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 5. And this is for group one, and she's also doing it for group two. So you have, this is strange to see this out of Darcy. This is what she's saying right here. She says for both groups, this has to be true. Which she didn't do up here. Up at the very top up here, she did n greater than 30. So I don't get why the shift, okay? This is closer to what most people do, not Darcy. Now one thing in here, this P thing right here, you have to be careful because that P thing is, wow, I, yeah, that is just weird ass equation. This P thing here is X1 plus X2 over N1 plus N2. I don't know why she's doing all this right here because this boils down to this equation. That's just really, really freaking weird. Okay, because this equation is what she's saying right here. And then she gives this complicated equation here. Okay, so there's a run through her formula sheet. I don't like this formula sheet. It's chaotic, it's random, it's scattered. It does say what you need, but it's not organized well. It's got gaps everywhere, it's jumping around. But then again, there you go. Here's a run through her formula sheet. Hopefully you find this helpful and useful. I will be back later.